Hello and welcome to the Girl Games Mega Thread. I'm Devious Vacuum, and with me for this video is Asterisk. Hello. Uh, so with this thread, I really want to examine the phenomenon of shitty flash games made for and targeted at little girls. Uh, that are seem to be this ubiquitous disease that has been spread all over the internet. Um, you've probably heard of them before. Um, I think we all kind of know they exist, but I have been taking a closer look at them recently, and there are a lot more than I ever thought was even possible. And I really want to take a look at these games because one, they're garbage, and which is hilarious. And two, they're incredibly damaging, and sexist, and racist, and awful! So let's start with Party Brat's Makeover. Um, these these uh, games, I actually, the particular uh, games that I picked are from an article that was posted, uh, it was published in The Guardian, and it's based on, uh, on an article from uh, one of the women involved with misrepresentation. And... Uh, it's about her discovery of these type of games, and it was published earlier this month, earlier in January 2014. And uh, sh these are the games that she referred to in her article. Uh, so these are the games that I'm going to be playing, and I'll provide a link to the article I'm talking about. So first, uh, you, Bratz is kind of old. Uh, I don't, I don't think they're allowed to make them anymore uh, because there was like some copyright infringement stuff with Barbie. Which is why it's now Monster High and Barbie. <laughs> oh really? I didn't know that. I thought the brats were still around. Oh, no, they they had some. They, they changed to something else because the the guy who created them came from the brats company. Uh, came from Mattel, and I don't know. <laughs> it was a whole it was a whole debacle. So brats aren't around anymore. Uh, but their games are still there with their no noses. <laughs> There's also that live action movie. Oh 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 boy. <laughs> So these are this is the standard formula that I think you think of when you think of uh, a girl game, um, one of these quote unquote games for quote unquote girls, which is just a dress up game. Um, there's also I mean, you wash your hair and then you style it and maybe you change your clothes and then you get to look at the thing that just happened. And that's does that count as a game? Um, no, I don't know. I guess it's sort of a weird, uh, weird line because, I mean, or, I don't know. Maybe it's just something that's branded as a game because it's a pretty old template, like, dre for, especially for girls, like a dress-up game where all you do is like change clothes. But in, for like a video game, I don't really think so. Yeah, it doesn't it's it's almost a game. It could be the introduction to a game, but not the entire game. Um, oh, I also chose. Um, when possible, I'm gonna be trying to to choose um, characters that are or like dress up ladies that are uh, and take a look at a lot of the representation of um, non-white girls. Uh, and this is so this is Yasmin, the brat who I assume is supposed to be Hispanic or Latina. Um, kind of. There was also Jade, the one that was supposed to be Asian, um, but they don't really. They don't really look like that. And, and it's interesting how these games um, sort of represent um, minorities in that they don't very often. And we'll take a look at, at the various ways in which they're represented in these types of games. Um, so in addition to sending bad messages about, about sex, they're also sending bad messages about race. Um, and generally promoting these strange beauty ideals. But... I mean, this type of game, you might think, oh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty harmless. It's just a boring uh, dress-up game. And, uh, and I, I, thought that, I thought that too. Um, and I was looking at, uh, until I came across this article, and it pointed out in juxtaposition of this game, which the article itself was written by um, a teacher uh, who worked with little girls in a library setting where they would be playing this game like in their spare time, in their free time. And the number, and this was a study that was done in the UK, but recent, a recent study published um, in the UK about young girls and self-esteem is that even more, a growing number of girls uh, 
are in like high school and middle school age girls are um, reporting that they have you know bad self image, bad self esteem in in today in the year of Luigi. <laughs> oh no! Well. I mean, now's the time. Think about Luigi and his representation in games. He seems like he has pretty pretty bad self-confidence, I have to admit. And uh oh, yes, yeah, so and then you can put you can put decals on them. So I just well, started doing uh, that. Mm, that's weird. Uh my attention span in these <laughs> games is going to be very variable. <laughs> oh, so I have a question I'd like to um to pose to you. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about, uh, like, quote-unquote girl games, um, so there's, there's obvious reasons for why, uh, they're branded, uh, to be specific to girls, because that's just the stereotype, that's the, the, the sort of the schema for what girls are supposed to be, especially, like, in the U.S. and, uh, most Western cultures, but... It it doesn't like why are dress up games so still so like gendered that way because I know that there are a lot of like guys that in like video games in particular like if you're given customization options they like to just spend a bunch of time customizing characters like ping ping out clothes designing a face or whatever yeah I think that that a lot of people I mean I think that the the, the dress up aspect of video games appeals to everyone mm-hmm. um, so it really doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense in that respect either. Um, oh, also, with this particular game, Hollywood Beauty Secrets, it's not just customizing your character, but fix- also I thought that was the advance button, but it was the sound button. But it's also like repairing. So there's a lot of them that start out with like a character in with like ugly skin, and you have to do all this shit to her. And it's very like linear progression. You know, see, I'm just clicking on a face. And, um, but it's more like showing you, like, these are all the steps that you have to take. Um, except I've never actually done any of this stuff. (laughs) I haven't either. I mean, my skin is okay. I mean, some of the stuff I get, like, I know what it is. I know what it's for. I don't know what the gold gradient is for. Um, I don't know. I mean, you just need that rich look. You just put, you just put gold dust all over yourself. I don't know. It's it's it is Hollywood beauty secrets, so maybe they do use gold. Just gold leaf their face. So when like a high definition camera is capturing your image, you just have that that amazing twilight sparkle going on. Oh yes, beautiful. Oh and that was two awful references in one. Good job. <laughs> oh god, I didn't even think about the other one. <laughs> this this video's over. So, I can never um, be heard from again. Also none of these like I mean, it has, like, using products, but I would expect there to be more product placement, but there's really not. Like, it's not like, oh, use this brand. It's just like, this is what you should do. Yeah, that's interesting. Part of it is probably because since these are mostly pumped out by, like, some development house, uh, development studio uh, that is mostly focusing on these, they're probably not going to want to pay licensing fees, even if they would make a bunch of money if the company hired them to do it, so... Yeah, I just, I'm not, I've, and another thing about these games is that there's so many of them, and they're all, like, free to play, but they're still garbage, yeah. and, like, who's making all of these, and what is their business model? Ad revenue, I mean, that's, like, I don't really know what else it could possibly be, since this this is a free site, right? Like, you just go yeah. on, pick a game. And we'll see some of the ads in the videos where I um, have to disable ad block. <laughs> Um, another important part of this game is that there's a cool meter on the left, which I failed to notice while I was playing the game. Um, but the different choices that you make for the different colors of, of stuff, um, makeup and stuff, like up and make your cool meter go up and down. And so the, the, the actual challenge is choosing things that look cool enough. So you don't even get to pick what you want. Oh. You, you have to pick what maximizes the cool factor. Well, it's terrible, but I guess it's a step up from the previous game because that's actually there's some sort of a rule set. <laughs> there's like yeah, win I conditions. Yeah, it's a goal. Yeah. yeah. But um, but I I just I choose the most horrible options <laughs> because how can you not? Uh, otherwise, it would be even more boring. Um, I personally, uh, you know, I was once a little girl. 
and I don't have a strong memory of playing these kinds of games, um, but also I didn't have fast internet until 2007, so this may be a, uh, more of a thing that like is is more more relevant to to younger younger girls. Yeah, maybe. Also, I found angry anime eyebrows. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yes. it looks like they have the uh, the, the like uh, Wii me eyebrow sets. <laughs> Also, all these games have you draw on your eyebrows, which is not, uh, I mean, it's not, like, super common. It's kind of old school to draw on your eyebrows. It's not something that's in, like, general practice. So, do you have, like, any sort of a sense for what things increase the cool meter? Um, no. (laughs) Because it's it seems it's like incredibly to... I guess that's like real to life. It's super opaque. Like what yeah. what beauty secrets do you need to make everyone like you? You might notice it go up and down sometimes. Yeah, I have I have noticed. Uh, that I I really don't I don't know um what is the coolest look. <laughs> I just picked what I thought was good, which is what I do in real life, and I and I I'm just fine, you know. Maybe by your own standards, but someday... <laughs> it's the might. only standards I care about. That's good. Um, also, these games are fascinating to me, personally, because um, when I was a little girl, I was super, super against... <laughs> like I was just a little up-and-coming feminist, and I was just super against any sort of outward expression of femininity. Um, I dressed like a boy, I did my hair like a boy, I acted like a boy. Um, I did not want to do any girly things... And um, this is apparently what I was missing out on. So it's extra fascinating to me now to go back because... Oh, also I did a, a faux pas. Yeah. It was not not good. So after all that, I didn't even win the game, I guess. Uh, what are you doing? You've ruined this girl's cool. life. She'll never be attractive and beautiful and successful. Clearly. Um, this is another game that is mentioned by the article as an idea of what kind of age group is looking at this website. What? What is this game? <laughs> this is Where's My Blankie. I, Where's my blankie? Oh. This is actually, like, a very complex game. Um, it's a series of mini-games where you have to figure out how to get the blankie back. <laughs> and it starts with just one simple click, but in the later levels... Which I did play, because I wanted to see how far the rabbit hole went. You end up, like, playing Breakout and other things in order to get the blankie back. Oh, weird. But this is just... This is... This is... This is good. This is a good level. (laughs) Whoa. Whoa, what... What is going (laughs) on here? There's a crossbow in the box. I... I do not think this is OSHA, like... (sighs) Crossbows, man. Come on. So that game's great. Um, but, but that's the, that's the age level. Um, oh, and then this is, this is girl dress up, um, in which, a girl fashion, whatever, they're all interchangeable. Um, and, in which you can style, uh, a girl, a horse, and a dog. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, um, I sort of, I, I didn't really, I, I wasn't, uh, in favor of expressing any sort of outward femininity until I was really halfway through college. And, um, because I felt like if I was gonna express any sort of outward femininity, then it would mean that I would have to try to be like this. And, uh, so I feel like there's really no way to win. Um, also I considered making Nicki Minaj at that point, but then I was like, no. Um. So your, your perspective on, um, like the scale of like masculinity femininity and self-representation it was much more like black and white there wasn't it wasn't like a slope or a scale yeah, you sort, sort really of thought was. you had to go all in yeah um well I, I figured that i would be held to that standard mm, I see. basically yeah it would be like well i could not go all in but then people would be like why didn't you go all in you're not good enough so i just skewed it all together and um, and only really, you know, much much later on um, in college, I was like, oh, I I want to, I want to, you know, be sexually attractive and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
sort of had to come to that point where I had to reconcile and be like, no, I, you know, I'm gonna define my gender expression the way that I want to, and uh, and be okay with you know being myself and also liking pretty things and wearing dresses and doesn't mean that you know and, and you can you can be a girl and wear dresses and not necessarily be you know anti-feminist. Um, but if you grew up with this sort of thing being your representation of femininity, then you might not think that. Yeah. This game ended up getting a little more complex, although I couldn't hardly figure out how to use it. Uh, I guess because I'm too old. <laughs> and, oh, no. um, but you can, you can design individual pieces and change the color of different pieces. Um, it was at this point that I realized that these were not human clothes. <laughs> and I was like, oh... You can dress up the horse, too. Oh, I should do that. But first I should figure out how to do this. And uh, so you can color all the different clothes. So it's a little more involved than just than a lot of the other games that, that we, we're going to see uh, that are just, like, take two seconds. This you can actually really spend some time on. Yeah. And so maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. I mean, it, it seems about the same as... Uh, as like the Barbie games that I had when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, Barbie fashion. This designer. sort of, I guess, this sort of ties back into your earlier question about whether or not they're games. Um, and I think even with the added uh, complexity, it's they're still not really games. They're more like activities. Like I guess the the makeover one earlier was more gamey, but it's basically like you know having a coloring book or um, some paper dolls to play with that you're yeah. sort of just you're not really ma- it's not a game it's just an activity yeah and and i feel like the difference there is um is a lot in terms of um sort of an expression of agency hmm, yeah and and you know being able to to you know take control of the world around you and all that kind of stuff that that games bring in that like video games brought in for me when i was a kid you know, not just you know, exploring the world, having you know, actually having a tangible effect um, on the world. And um, a big thing about a lot of these games is that you don't, you're not really having an effect on anything. Yeah. You're just you're, you're just co- like coloring things. You're, there's very little, um, very little player agency in determining what's happening in the game. Um, even especially the like the Hollywood makeover game where we saw where you were just basically supposed to click on the things in order, and there was no punishments. There's just, this is what you do. Do it now. Yeah, that's that's a really, like... That's very subtle, but it's very... That's a very uh, insidious, like, sort of message. It's the sort of thing you might internalize and not realize about what, like, what this is saying about being a girl or, like, a woman. Like, you don't have any agency. That's, These are the sorts of games you're supposed to play. Um, that's this is just how, how it is. Yeah, this is how you interact with the world. Like, with a world. It Not not good. Also, this dog is great. Yeah. So I are, really like this Are the dog. horse and the dog, do they, like, belong to her? Um, I think so. Are they... Are they... Are they belong to me. <laughs> Oh, maybe they are. Maybe these this is this is uh, these girl this girl's uh, headmates and personas. Oh man, I wish I could get a dog that always wore Crouch and Mark's glasses. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's so beautiful. I love that dog. That dog was the most rewarding part of this game. <laughs> also, Pinkie Pie and Battle Armor was pretty good. <laughs> and then just some girl. Yeah, just some girl. Tried to give her a little bit of rodeo style since I'm from Texas. <laughs> So our next game um, sort of dates this this site and these games in case you're thinking like, well, a lot of these games look like they're older um, because they're so shitty. Uh, this game is about Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. Um, for for the, the non-teenage girls uh, watching this, uh, <laughs> Selena Gomez is a, uh, a teen pop singer that was on the Disney Channel. And, uh, and Justin Bieber is also a teen pop singer, sort of. And they dated for a while. They're not anymore. But the point of this is that Selena Gomez has woken up with no makeup on. And Justin Bieber is about to come over. And as you can see, the like and share buttons are blocking my way of interfacing with the game. <laughs> oh, no. Well, so now we know the why they broke up. You're supposed to... 
you're supposed to click on all the things to get her ready for her day. Um, and so, it, which includes putting on perfume and makeup and plucking her eyebrows and uh, brushing her hair, which is the one that makes sense, I think. Um, but uh, apparently the, the point is that we can't let Justin show up and find out that we're not constantly wearing makeup. That, that, this is, like, horrifying. <laughs> it's, it's, it's even worse because this is, like, a real person. <laughs> Yeah, and also this caricature of Selena Gomez is really awful. Yeah, um, Selena Gomez looks looks like a little baby. <laughs> um, she has like a very round face, and this is just almost like a like an offensive caricature of her. Like it, it just, I don't know. It makes her look much older also than she actually is. But so so the 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 point of this game is of course that that you can never. Uh, Never let boys see you without makeup on, because that's bad for some reason. They they just couldn't handle the the dark truth. Yeah, the girls don't look perfect all the time. Even though presumably Justin Bieber is showing up in. Also, this is how I put on my lipstick, <laughs> one block at a time. It was very difficult to. Oh, and yes, and this I don't get to put on whatever eyeshadow I want. I have to I have to match the the picture. Which, I feel like matching the picture is more of a game thing, but somehow worse than letting me pick whatever I want. Yeah. Like, match the picture is a game. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's often, you know, a minigame in, in actual games, but it's just, it's a game. It's a Mario Party minigame, match the picture. And, uh, but, but in this way, it, it is sort of worse. Oh no, he's peeking in. Yeah, you gotta watch out for that, Justin. This, I could not figure out. I was clicking, I was moving things, <laughs> I was just like, what's going on? Because apparently she's missing some eyelashes or something. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm not very good at these games. <laughs> but I did only just play them once. But he caught us. He caught me. I'm, now he knows that I'm a human being. That. <laughs> oh no. So uh, this is back to school makeover, and you may notice that it is in the same style as Hollywood makeover. So I think it like is made by the same people. Uh, but this this one um, does not actually. Oh, also that's loud. Um, does not actually have uh, a coolness meter but I thought it did because of the previous game so I was like I'm gonna outsmart you this time but then I I just I'm just hopeless at this I don't know how the five year olds do it but this one um also another thing is that like I might not have used a lot of these products before but I, I know what a lot of them are and something like an exfoliating scrub, like, why are you putting it on with a brush? Like, a fan brush? <laughs> I don't know. So, so walk us through this process here, uh, Devious Vacuum. What, what exactly do we need to do to completely transform ourselves into the, the ultimate feminine, feminine ideal? Uh, well, apparently you need to put a, a steamer on your face, which I have seen them before in, like, the drugstore, but I, I never really understood the point. Um, All right, well, she's already in a bathroom that's full of steam. Yeah. Her she just left her shower running, wasting water. Yeah, what kind of message is that sending? Anti-environmental message. Also, this is, I guess, a Q-tip, and we're using it to get rid of whiteheads. Um, or acne. Uh, but that's not really how that works. Also, now we put on we put on the, the stereotypical uh, mask and cucumbers over our eyes, and now our skin is clear. And I just I'm I'm shocked by these kind of things because I don't really have a lot of exp I mean, my mother didn't doesn't do any of these things. <laughs> But the, uh, no, no feminine example in my life does these things, so this is even weirder. So anyway, I thought that the one that I was supposed to pick, because so I was going for like black hair, red eyes, yeah, this is crazy, let's do something crazy. And then I was like, wait, what if what they want me to do is pick the one in the upper left? <laughs> and then I was like, oh shit, I'm not going to let you trick me this time, game. Hmm. Um, but, but, 
but then it, it turned out to not be necessary. I think it's about this time that I noticed this. But who knows? It's much more fun when I get to pick whatever I want. But uh, all these games that I play in these videos, yes, now I've noticed, and I'm like, ah, I'll do what the game wants me to do. Yes, you'll bend to the will of the so game. We'll see. We'll see the default look. So if you could design a game for girls, like what, what sort of things would you want to incorporate? Um, well, I would probably make it like a video game <laughs> and not specifically say that it was for girls and have it be a fun game about doing fun things. Um, I would have to think more about specifically like from the female perspective, but uh, it doesn't really seem like you know, there should be anything explicitly different, especially with, like, something like a, a game, a, you know, you play, everybody plays Scrabble together, and that's, I don't know, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, I would just, I just want to play a video game. I love a lot of games, and I didn't, uh, and they don't need to be gendered for me, for me to like them. Um, and this, this is... I would, I would probably design some sort of game with goals, um, means to achieve those goals, um, and, uh, you know, maybe after you finish designing your character, you could actually play with that character and, like, do something, have more movement going on. Let's not get of our, ahead of ourselves here. That's a lot to ask. <laughs> it's not like anyone does that. No, I've never seen a game like that. This is how you should look in school. This is what you should do every day before you go to school if you're a girl. You you were a boy in school at some point, asterisk. I was. Did you know that all the girls around you had to do that all that stuff? I had no idea. I'm learning so much. Oh, 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 oh my, what is this game? This is the worst game. <laughs> um, well, I'll let it speak for itself. She's got a dress to impress, and his dream girl looks like that. So she's got to make herself look like that. Oh, okay, yes, I see. I see. So he's not supposed to like her for her own sense of style or individual... She, he's, she's got to measure up to his dream girl. She's staring yes, into his mind right now. He has to change right her entire physical form in order to look like his dream girl. So this is sort of the anti-Shrek. <laughs> yes. This is a very complex game, and I only played uh, the first four levels of it. We're only going to look at the at two of the levels. The first level, and then the last level that I played. But don't worry, <laughs> because for the last level, I turned the girl into an amalgamation of all the girls from the previous levels, so that we would get a sense of what we had done in the part that I cut out. <laughs> um, but this, this, this girl, so this is a pretty simple first level. Um, what I did forget is that you still have to dye the hair, even though her natural hair color is brown. Which makes oh. it look brown but shiny. <laughs> I was confused, so I didn't do that. So I got points off for not having shiny hair. Because apparently, no matter what, my natural hair cannot be shiny and beautiful. I have to change that, even if we don't have to change that. And then I wanted to look at some of the other clothing options and I found a purse that I would totally have in real life which is love candy <laughs> nice I want that purse in real life so if we match more than 50% of his dream girl desires then he likes us and we can continue to the next date now you might think okay each date it's gonna be like maybe a little bit different but each date is completely <laughs> different wow, completely different this guy's really fickle. How much time is passing between these dates? Because you've apparently also returned to your original state as well. I don't... I don't know. Is this even the same guy? Is this perhaps some strange dystopian future where all the men look the same? Perhaps. I mean, who's to say these aren't all the same girl? That's true. So this game is particularly uh, 
gross because you don't get to really pick anything about what your character looks like. Uh, it's just the point of it is to match, um, which is which is sort of a game, um, but full of, but done in you know in the worst way possible. Yeah. So in this level we had to use the the light hair. In a previous level we had to have dark straight hair, and then in another level <laughs> we had to have curly red red hair. So I just represented them all here. <laughs> So we should probably talk about a little, like, some of the... Another major problem a lot of these games have had is sort of the reinforcement of, like, particular body shapes. Yes, all the all the girls in all of the, the games are really skinny, and they have big heads and anime eyes. Um, this girl has a serious case of the anime eyes. Her eyes are more than one eye width apart. And uh, Maybe someday we'll find but, a cure, but for now... <laughs> She she also she has kind of like the fish eye kind of thing going on. She looks like she's looking in two different directions. But uh, I didn't make it. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not his type. You are not his. I don't type. know why. <laughs> I think she looks great. Um, but th so these are girl games. Yeah, that that certainly was a thing. Wasn't that fun? Didn't you have fun? I guess. I've certainly learned about a, a lot about what it's like to be a girl, I, I think. Or at least this what... This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see more.